I am Maria Palacios, a marine ecologist, project manager, and science communicator from Deakin University's Blue Carbon Lab. I'm going to be talking about citizen science, partnerships, and collaborations, but first, let's talk a bit about wetlands. So coastal wetlands such as mangrove, forests, seagrass meadows, and salt marsh are extremely important ecosystems that provide a bunch of important ecosystem services. For example, they protect our coast, they are wildlife nurseries, they filter and clean our water, they provide habitat to a lot of species, and last but not least, they're extremely efficient carbon sinks. So similar to most other trees, Coastal wetlands have the capacity to remove atmospheric carbon dioxide through the natural process called biosequestration. So basically what happens is that plants take a big breath in of carbon dioxide, they grab that carbon molecule and they use it to generate and create their branches, their trunks, their leaves, and then they release back oxygen into the atmosphere. So whenever this process is happening in normal green terrestrial forests, we call it green carbon and green carbon ecosystems. But when this process is happening in ocean or coastal wetlands, then we call it blue carbon and blue carbon ecosystems. Coastal wetlands are amazing because they can trap carbon 40 times faster than any other terrestrial forest. And they have the ability to store all the carbon for millennial timescales. The key is that they actually bury it and put it into the ground, into that muddy, salty soil. So basically, given the amazing capacity that wetlands have to serve as carbon sinks, they're one of the most efficient nature-based solutions against climate change. It is absolutely important that everyone in the community understands that protecting and restoring wetlands is critical for climate change mitigation. But in this particular program, we wanted to engage and invest in human capital that was able to invoke change and steer Australia's industry towards a more sustainable future. In other words, we wanted to target Australia's corporate executives. Right. So we created a multi-sector partnership between the NGO Earthwatch, the industry led by HSBC, and the academia led by Deakin University to deliver a citizen science program that would empower Australian executives to build a sustainable future while advancing, obviously, the research on coastal wetlands and climate change. We specifically wanted to drive environmental change in these high-level executives by swapping their suits for gumboots delivering an immersive experience into science, wetlands, and climate change. The program launched in 2018, mainly targeting staff from HSBC, but then it expanded to include more than 300 executives from 20 industries. We had really good representation from the finance sector, the transportation and travel industry, insurance companies, and even law firms. To obtain the greatest impact on the participants, the program was designed as a full-day immersive experience combining educational talks and hands-on research in local wetlands. So usually the citizen science program began with three educational talks introducing participants to topics like sustainable practices in businesses, green finance, climate change, coastal wetlands, and science in general. In the afternoon, participants got to swap their suits for gumboots and join the scientists in doing coastal wetland research. Usually, we first explained the research and demonstrated the field protocols, and then had participants split into teams where they would work for about four hours collecting soil cores and surveying mangrove and salt marsh vegetation. Given the amount of data the scientists collected, with the help of the citizen scientists, we were able to greatly advance our understanding of blue carbon coastal ecosystems. Data was processed by scientists from several universities to prepare about eight different publications that filled a bunch of knowledge gaps in the variability of blue carbon stocks, the benefits of mangrove expansion for carbon storage, and the importance of raising awareness on nature climate solutions. For example, one of the projects in Melbourne looked at the blue carbon gains of mangrove restoration. Sampling at Stony Creek, an industrial area that was planted with mangroves in 1986, revealed that in just 30 years, 
one hectare of mangroves could restore more than 600 tons of carbon, equivalent to the emissions of 500 cars in a year. Another of our projects was instead looking at blue carbon losses from coastal wetlands. Participants from Sydney ran an experiment examining the effects of fertilizer overloads in salt marsh and mangrove floods. Results showed that plots with high nitrogen levels lost 23% of the soil carbon stocks. These negative effects were particularly strong in mangroves, where the diversity of good microbes was drastically dropped. I won't go much into the details of the publications, but this is basically a list of all the research outputs that were delivered by the program. Some of them have already been peer-reviewed and published, while others just have been submitted or being prepared. But now, let's talk about the people. We measured the impact that a program had on the executive staff through a social science study where participants had to respond to three online questionnaires. The first one was delivered just before the Citizen Science Day. They had a second one just after uh, they participated in the program. And then they received the final one three months after the Citizen Science Day. Some of the descriptive responses revealed that participants really enjoyed connecting with the scientists, getting their hands dirty and really contributing to research. Responses also showed that participants were really good at taking the main messages from the program. When we asked them what they had learned during the Citizen Science Day, they usually mentioned things like the impact of CO2 and climate change and the ability of blue carbon ecosystems to trap it. Check out, for example, one of the, what one of the participants had to say. Uh, really interesting to learn some facts and figures about um, blue carbon, which I'd never heard of before. Uh, and it was always good to get your hands dirty and do something a bit different than uh, just your standard day in the office. Great for meeting other people from HSBC as well, building relationships. But obviously the main purpose out here is to assist in research. Also, the numeric results of the survey indicated that the program had significantly increased their understanding of nature. So, for example, we found that 95% of the respondents said that they understood the importance of natural capital to businesses. We also saw that 78% of them were much more knowledgeable on coastal wetlands. A good example of this is that before the Citizen Science Day, most participants associated coastal wetlands with pretty basic descriptive terms such as water, mud, wet, or trees, as you can see in that uh, top word cloud. However, after the program, participants were able to make much more high level connections and they started using terms related to ecosystem services. So for example, we found now a presence of words like blue carbon and carbon storage, as you can see in that bottom uh, word cloud. In terms of knowledge, we also saw that they had gained better understanding of environmental issues. There was, for example, a 16% increase in the number of participants that were very concerned with climate change, as well as a 22% increase in the number of respondents that felt that sea level rise, pollution, land reclamation, and carbon footprints were all very important issues that needed to be addressed. Additional to increasing knowledge, you guys know that this program was really focused on driving environmental changes and making sure that all these executives would understand that the decisions they make in the boardroom can have direct impacts on nature and climate change. So for example, we were really excited to see that by th the three-month survey, already 55% of the participants had adopted practices or taken some, some decision within their industry that would reduce adverse effects on natural ecosystems. We also saw that all this knowledge had expanded onto their homes. We saw that between 50 and 90% of them had already implemented sustainable practices, such as reducing meat consumption or increasing the use of green technologies. Right, so as I've tried to explain throughout this talk, this multi-sector partnership between industry, NGO, and Echinibia was able to, just in two years, deliver incredible results in terms of participant engagement, environmental training, and scientific outcomes. In fact, the success of the Citizen Science Program was recognized through the 2019 Australian Financial Review Higher Education Award for Industry Engagement and the 2020 Premier Sustainability Award for Education.
You can learn more about this program in the Blue Carbon Labs website or checking the hashtag Blue Carbon Army. The program has continued to grow and we are now engaging some new exciting industries. If you want to be part, please get in touch. Many thanks for listening.